So really, uh, from this then, the only thing unresolved is, you know, when we introduced the, the definition of strain, we had this sort of arbitrary factor of one half out here. And I, and I said it would be clear in the, in the small strain approximation where that comes from. So let's, let's go ahead and show that. But uh, so also, just really quickly, if you remember when we defined 1D strain, we talked about the Seth Hill strain. It's sort of this generalized strain measure. And we have one of those, or you know, it's, it's generalized to three dimensions as well. So the Seth Hill strain, um, and again, this is just to show that there are an infinite number of equally valid strain measures. So the Seth Hill strain is this guy. Where C is defined as F transpose F raised to the M power. So you can see just by inspection that if M equals one, we get the green Lagrange strain. And if M equals minus one, we get the Eulerian strain. But there's plenty of other equally valid, like as M approaches zero, we get something called the hinky strain, or the true strain maybe. So I just wanted to point that out, that there, you know, again, there's infinite number of um, equally valid strain measures. And a second order approximation of this guy is this. Okay, where this little e is the linear strain, or the small strain, right? So it's that thing. So, and the reason I write this is to show, again, all of these infinite number of Seth Hill strain measures all reduce in the, in the linear limit, right? So if you ignore, see, these are, these are going to introduce nonlinear terms. This is going to introduce nonlinear terms. So when you linearize that thing, all of them reduce to the small strain. Okay. So 